Thank you, Ron. Your Honor, the decision to change venue rests on what you've heard today and the court's determination that there's a reasonable likelihood that all of the media coverage has impacted the impartiality of a Lata County jury. That comes from Paul and Shepard. Your Honor, it's important to think of that standard in light of the Constitution of the United States and the state of Idaho. Mr. Koberger has a constitutional right to a fair trial by an impartial jury. And to guarantee that, this court must change venue. Your Honor had, can look at the media coverage in this case and know that it's prejudic prejudicial coverage. This, the amount of coverage is a huge amount of coverage. The kind of coverage is prejudicial coverage and it's had an impact on the Lake Todd County potential juror. The court can see actual prejudice by understanding the results of that survey. Reading the hundreds of comments from Lake Todd County residents, you can see that the media has been prejudic prejudicial and it's actually prejudiced potential jurors in Lake Todd County. The court can also presume prejudice by looking at this case as it is. It's an extreme case that comes out of the Haddon case in Idaho, and you can presume prejudice in an extreme case. You have heard all day long how much coverage this case garners. It's Latop County, it's bigger, it's a state of Idaho, it's nationwide, it's outside of the nation, it's continuous, it's everyday, social media, books have been written, primetime television shows have happened in this case. It just doesn't stop. And you know that this is prejudicial coverage as well. The state has agreed things that were surveyed are false media items. At least some of them. This is all before the other things contained in the media are subject to admissibility rules, even if they're awkward. Subject to cross-examination and full context explanation of what they mean. So you have this coverage that permeates the community, bigger than the community, the state, bigger than the state, the nation, and this is an extreme case. The court should think about things that have happened in this courtroom too, when considering whether this is an extreme case and the amount of prejudice that exists. This court has issued courtroom rules to um, determine who can have a camera, where a camera can be, the court on our motion limited things and finally removed cameras from this courtroom and the court right now is live streaming. That doesn't take care of all of it though. The live stream is captured and replayed almost in real time, if not real time. Everything that happens in this case is on social media and all kinds of things that don't happen in this case run rampant in news stories and social media stories and impact all of the jurors. It is particularly important when you're considering this extreme case to look at the size of this community. You heard a lot about that today. You heard how bias is created. And when you think about this little community and all of the people that spoke out early on about this case, that's how the bias starts in this case. People in this community have a lot of ownership in the case as well. They, they're connected to the case by being related to or knowing people that conducted the investigation. They're connected to the case by knowing the community leaders that have spoken out about the case. They're connected to the case by the relationship with the University of Idaho. That's a pretty tight connection. And that is that is how you have to think about the human bias that exists and how it cannot be fixed if we get to jury selection. Your Honor has to look at the content and know the content of the media and know that there hasn't been positive stories about Brian Koberger. It's negative stories 
There's not a media story talking about Brian Koberger's right to be presumed innocent. There's not a media story talking about Brian Koberger being loved by his family. Nobody's talking about the good grades he achieved all through his undergraduate career and graduate programs. Nobody's talking about the dog that he loves and helped train. It's all negative. It's false. It's misleading. It's stuff that's rumor and never coming into court. There are things about his character that are just untrue that are out there. When you have this much information surrounding a case, it's an extreme case and it's all over the place. I don't want the court to think all this social media happens and it's not centered in Latok County and think that's okay because it's just not. There's plenty that's centered in Latok County. I'm sure the court remembers where we started earlier today with the two pie charts that um, we were shown by Prusner this morning. One talks about how big the coverage is in Latah County that projects into Latah County compared to how small of a piece of the pie of the whole population in Idaho that Latah County has. So that's a lot of coverage directed into Latah County. And that's the stuff. Those are the, the uh, news stories, the nightly news that's coming into Latah County residents' TVs. That's their newspaper that they're going to get in the morning. But that's not all. Latah County has as much access to primetime news stories, as much access to Facebook groups, to different podcasts, to watch things on YouTube, to buy books containing misinformation. They have as much access to do that as anybody else. So you have to recognize how big the case is, how much coverage there is, and just how prejudicial the coverage is. You understand that, we understand that learning from, from Dr. L. Aliley this morning when she talked about bias. So having that as a backdrop and thinking about the survey results that we've just talked about, you can see that there is a huge correlation to the few media items that could be tested and prejudgment of guilt for Mr. Koberger. And those are people in the top here. You can see the case connections that are bigger than the other, the other counties, and they just don't go away. You also should be aware that the coverage doesn't drop off. It's not going to stop. It may peak and it may dip a little bit, it comes right back up. You can expect that will continue. We have a pretty good schedule of hearings coming up for pretrial motions. The court issued a scheduling order a couple of months ago. And so you can expect that the interest in the case is gonna pop back up every single time we have one of those hearings. And that's a lot of media coverage and people in Latah County are gonna see it and read it and they're going to continue with their opinions. So what do we do? What do we do about that? It's tough. It's really tough in Idaho. There is a lot of case recognition and there's prejudgment in Idaho, but there's hope. When you look at the survey and you recognize that in other parts of this state, people don't recognize as many media items as they do in Latah County. That's good because that means right to prejudgment. So that's good. That's hope right there that we can find a jury somewhere in the state to give Mr. Koberger his right to a fair trial. They also, it's also a much larger population. So the impact on people sitting on the jury would be much smaller. Imagine with me that we are here in June of 2025 and we're here and we've seated 16 or so people over here. You're gonna recognize some of them. People that sit in the courtroom in our audience that wanna come and listen to the trial are going to see them. Even if they don't listen to the trial, people are gonna know whose car leaves their driveway every morning to get to the courthouse by 8.30 for three solid months. And those jurors that sit over there are gonna feel an immense amount of pressure to answer the call of the community to be safe. You, bring, you can read those comments about what people in this community think about Mr. Koberger and what they think would happen 
if the jury found him innocent. It's hard to imagine that one of those jurors who all of a sudden said, you know what, I'm not sure, and listened to more evidence and said, I'm really not sure. I don't think he did it. Are they going to be brave enough to do that, to write not guilty, to say not guilty, and to stand their ground? That comes right to impartiality, that the court has to be sure that that's not going to happen. And you can't be sure that there's a, a way to pick an impartial jury in this community. In Ada County, we don't have that. We don't have Canyon County, we also don't have that. Um, those are jurors that are not from this small, close-knit community. Those are jurors who aren't going to run into a police officer that investigated the case at the grocery store, or maybe somebody from the prosecutor's office at the jazz festival at the college. There are people who don't have those connections. The other difference that I think is really important to think about too is the, the, uh, the location, the connection to the house where this happened. That has been a pretty big deal in the community and wider, but in the community about whether the house should remain standing through trial or should be torn down. And there's been an awful lot of publicity about that. People in this community have an opinion one way or the other. We aren't going to know what their opinion is, but they're going to bring that into the court. People in Ada County do not have. And why Ada? Why not Canyon or why not Bannock? That, I think that's something that we should talk about. The easiest one to talk about is Bannock. The, the numbers look a little better there in a lot of regards, but it's a smaller community as well. And so I think that there's a danger that if the court says, I'm going to change venue and we're going to Bannock County, I think there's a, a danger with that small community, there could be more interest all of a sudden and we may run, run into a bit of a problem. So that's that's why I'm not here telling you Bannock County, but if you tell us Bannock County, I think we have a lot better shot at seating an impartial jury than we do here in Latak. Canyon County is the second largest and Your Honor, honestly, if the court says, let's change venue, let's go to Canyon County or Bannock County, I think we have a better shot at getting an impartial jury. But we picked Ada County specifically because we're aware of the, the structure of that courthouse, the way it's set up. We're aware that there's at least some statewide precedent for moving these big cases to Ada County. And we're aware that it would be easier to get our jurors to and from that courthouse in a way that they wouldn't have to go through the media. They would be kept private and in secret and secure. It makes sense to do to, to focus on Ada County for a lot of those reasons. Your Honor, we are we are mindful that that's a lot of miles away from here. But at the end of the day, the interest that we have is to protect Brian Koberger's constitutional rights. His right to a fair trial is as important as our right to free speech, our right to bear arms, our right, right to be free from unreasonable searches and seizures, and the right to a fair trial cannot happen in Latah County. There is way too much media coverage. It is biased media coverage. It has impacted the potential juror, and it causes bias in the potential juror. This is a tiny little community, and this case needs to move where there's a chance to get jurors that haven't prejudged guilt of Mr. Koberger and will have the ability to be anonymous and not known by everybody else in the community. The pressure to convict here is great, and it won't be in Ada County's. This the venue needs to be changed. Thank you, Ms. Taylor. Ms. 